David. It's my wife, Melissa. We've been married just shy of 20 years. We have one child, Ronnie. And we also have our four cats that live with us, Dexter, Rizzo, Lip, and Salem. Salem is my therapy cat. I was deployed in the Gulf War in the 90s, and then once again, ended up going to Iraq in 2010. When I got back from Iraq, I was having issues dealing with anxiety, bad dreams, things like that. So we got Salem to help me deal with it. Salem has helped me immensely. He sees me in a really panicky situation. He'll come up right at the door and I'm like, look, I know something's wrong, pet me. But he's our problem child. Uh -oh, no. They all got along great for the first couple years and then about a year ago is when Salem started acting out. At least once a day, Salem will attack the other cats. Um, usually it's Dexter that gets the brunt of it. It can get pretty loud and, and violent. I love Salem, but Salem's a huge jerk. He needs to stop attacking the other cats. It's plain and simple. Look at that, got her right on the nose. Salem. Could get to that point where he does some serious damage and we, we don't want that to happen. To see him fight like that and get vicious like that, it's distressing to me. Really? You're here to be a therapy cat, not to stress out everyone and the other cats. Basically, my whole life right now is centered around just avoiding conflict altogether. But the fighting causes my stress levels to go up, and just the overall anxiety level in the house is a big trigger for me, which is why we need Jackson's help. Melissa? Hey, this is uh, Ronnie. What's up, Ronnie? How you doing? Hi. Okay, guys. Let's talk cats. And there's definitely evidence of cats, which is nice. A lot of the houses I go to, you would never know there was a cat. How many do we have here? Four. What's going on here with the four cats? Well, Salem is pretty much my cat, but he can be a bit of a bully sometimes. In a house of four cats, how does somebody become your cat? Well, I've got some issues from being in the wars that I've been in. And the VA had offered me a service dog. Specifically for PTSD, is that what they? Yes, but I'm more of a cat person and um, I wanted one that I could bond with immediately, you know, and Salem was that cat. It was like, he knew, I knew, we both knew, boom. He's, he's coming home with me. Oh, wow. PTSD or post-traumatic stress disorder can develop in people who have survived scary or shocking or dangerous events. It's totally normal for those people to feel constantly on edge, to have bad memories, or have trouble sleeping after an experience like that. He'll know immediately when I walk in the door if I've had a real bad day. Yeah. He'll come right up to me and sit on my lap the whole night. That's so cool. Cats now are therapy animals. They go into hospitals. They're emotional support animals. They, they travel with people. It's about the world catching up a little bit and recognizing that cats are deeply emotional beings who care about the ones they love, just like any other animal. Does Salem have a problem with a specific cat or is it just Dexter. Free it's Dexter. The three boys used to play together really well, but one morning Salem attacked Dexter. We didn't see what happened. Since that first fight, how often is it that there's... Maybe once a day. A day? Yeah, it's, it's very random though, because we'll, they'll be sitting here and they'll be nice and calm, and all of a sudden one will give the other one a look and bam, it happens and then it's done. Have there been any major injuries from the cats? Rizzo has one right now. Yeah, she's Ooh, got does. a nice cut right across her nose. Oh no. We got video of them squaring off when the scratch happened. Okay, let's take a look at that. Okay, so we've got, this is right here. That's Rizzo. Whoa. So there's no predictability in terms of time of day or uh, before or after meals or anything like that, that that can connect it. You just know that if someone looks a certain way when someone else walks in the room, you're gonna have trouble. Or if somebody gets startled. Lip and Rizzo are very skittish. They slink around like they're being tracked. If you walked out there and startled one of them, especially Lip, and he takes off running, that, that'll trigger him. That'll, that'll trigger, trigger Salem. Salem. Mm -hmm. So they're constantly in fear. Mm -hmm. Well, that's no good. If I didn't get here, what's what's our worst fear in this house? No, we would keep trying. I mean, none of them are going anywhere. Okay. We just want Salem to be happy again. Yeah. 
And just, calm. It's really about Salem's yeah, happiness. Calm, just calm in the house. Because to see him fight like that gives me anxiety attacks. Right. David will thrive when the energy in this home is as flatlined as possible. All you're doing is breaking up fights all day long. That's not going to work for David. But, oh, who's that? That is Rizzo. Rizzo the princess. There she is. Now, Rizzo obviously is walking that way because, because I'm here? Is it because is all that, the time. That happens all the time? That walk? Yeah, plus she's always crouched down like... Oh, that's not cool. When I see Rizzo slinking across the floor and the family is telling me that's just who she is and what she does, that leads me to believe that Rizzo is living in fear 24-7. So I want to see if this behavior is present in all the other cats as well. Who's that? That's Dexter. That's Dexter. That's Dexter. Hi. Okay, so we got Dexter and we got Rizzo. And Salem and Lip. And Lip's in the house. In the bottom. Wait, of Lip that and Salem thing. are back there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's interesting too. Salem is just crammed in a corner right now. So for the cat that beats the hell out of everybody else in the house, he's got that sort of unconfident vibe. Salem is tucked behind a cat tree, plastered against the wall. Clearly the most scared cat in this house. That's interesting. He's a good cat. He likes people. He's very cuddly, but he like licks his belly and I'm really concerned about that. He's not that stressed out about you. Hi buddy. He's just having a good old sit. Did you tell me a little bit of an issue? Pick him up for a sec. <clears throat> Holy crap. Yep. Holy crap. Yeah, come on, Salem. That's a lot of missing Salem. He's mutilating himself. This is the cat who needs my help. So I have to gather more information to pinpoint exactly where all this anxiety is coming from. Wow. That is one trough of food you got over there. When did you start free feeding? About a year ago. It's interesting how when they started free feeding the cats, everything changed. When cats eat at the same time, their energy rises and falls at the same time. But with free feeding, they're eating on different schedules, so they have energy spikes that just aren't synced up. This could be causing problems here. Any other areas here where, where they yeah. very rarely You have been through a lot, dude. I'm, I'm looking around. You've got, what's your experience in the military? I was a commander of a vehicle. We were up on the front lines and we saw just devastation. Wow, man. The first time was the scariest. Yeah. There was actually chemical weapons involved in that. That'll make you grow up real quick. I was 20 years old when they sent me over there for that one. Do you feel like the, in terms of the PTSD, is that? Oh yeah, that's. About 90% where that comes from. So 20 years old, you get thrown into this, and the rest of your life, you're working around it. Does Salem play a, a specific role in terms of, I mean, is it nightmares or anything like that that hit you? Oh, yeah. So I'll be sleeping on my side, and he'll come up and, like, wake up. Wake up. It's just a dream. Wake up. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so impressed that the idea of therapeutic animals has taken root the way it has, because I mean, like you said, it helps, you know what I mean? And especially with the suicide rates, which are insane. Yeah, I just lost a friend. Due to the, the after effects or? Yeah. I'm so sorry, yeah. This is actually a life and death thing to David. These cats get him through every day. It's so crucial that we restore peace in this house. And let's talk about first things first. Obviously the cat, that seems to be picking these premeditated fights is also incredibly anxious, right? Because he's bald. So there's obviously energetic spikes happening in this house. We have to control their eating because that way their energy will all come up and down at the same time. And if they have a ritual of play that happens every day at predictable times, we're gonna start being able to control the energetic output of these cats and de-spike the home. The last part of this de-spiking homework is catification. You guys have already started doing that, which I'm really psyched about because I don't have to start you guys from square one. I want to create one more lane of superhighway. We can do that very simply with shelving or something like that to give us just that much more space to increase the peace in here. Because if cats aren't competing for the same resource, which is usually the ground, they tend to be a little more peaceful around each other. We're giving the cats options to get away from each other instead of meeting in the middle of the floor. 